Listen, should I call you Enzo or should I call you Eduardo? No, Enzo. Only my mother called me Eduardo, and everybody knows me as Enzo. In okay. Opinion. So you have to call me Jam because only my mother calls me Jeffrey. Okay. Okay. It's a deal. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. You know, half of my computer is just is just messaging now. Slack, HipChat, Skype, Viber, Jabber, IRC. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know the last one. Uh, no? Mm -hmm. So you've heard of this Drupal thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, it'd be funny if I still had ICQ going. I use QQ to communicate with China, the, the, and that is a port for ICQ in China. Wow. And, and that's popular? Yeah, the Drupal group, they have two Drupal groups because the limit is 2,000 members. Uh, no way. And then they have to split in several groups. <laughs> wow, okay. Are you going to China on this trip? Yeah. Wow, where are could, you going? I, I am going to New York first, Singapore, Vietnam, Korea, South Korea, Japan, Five cities in China, Thailand, Cambodia, uh, Thailand, Cambodia, Hong Kong, Philippines, um, maybe Australia and New Zealand. Wow. And who's paying for all of this? Myself. Wow. Wow. I am trying to put my money where my mouth is. I said that this is possible and I am trying to do. Uh, I, I promise I will try to help local communities in developing countries to try to increase the, their presence uh, in Drupal worldwide community. And the only way I found is try to visit them, to teach how to use Drupal, to teach how to use the Drupal console, and maybe to try to grow up the community in that way. But I have a sponsor. Recently, a Chinese person, he wants uh, to invite me to do a session in Beijing. Mm -hmm. And he paid my flight to go to Beijing. Nice. From French and guy. So it's, it's nice. Cool. <laughs> now it sounds like you only need about 20 other sponsors for all the other flights, right? That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> This is the Acquia podcast. And <laughs> I'm with Enzo today, who is an extraordinary Drupalist from Costa Rica. And Enzo is embarking on an amazing journey for Drupal starting February the 10th, 2016. Enzo, you introduce yourself and <laughs> tell us about your plans. Uh, no, okay. Uh, thank you again for inviting me. So I am Enzo. I am, I am a Drupal guy from 2008 located in Costa Rica. And I decided to do a trip around the world literally, and I named it a, a Drupal around, around the Drupal war in 120 days. So that's what I'm doing, <laughs> starting tomorrow. And the idea, the, the seed of the idea for this trip actually goes back to the 2014 Drupal Association uh, community 2015. board member elections. 2015, last 2015 year. 2015 board member elections. What did you, what did you, what did you promise at that point? Uh, okay, my idea to try to get elected is to provide a different perspective to Drupal Association. And I, my idea is try to help communities in developing countries to be more involved in Drupal community. And to try to do some kind of training, visit them, encourage them to try to create documentation in their own language. That's mean Chinese, Thai, Korean, any language is, is, is good for the Drupal community. Wow, so tell us about your itinerary for this trip. Okay, I, as I say, I will start tomorrow for starting, I will start my trip in New York, USA. Uh, I will do a session with a company there. And from there, I will attend the DrupalCon uh, Asia in Mumbai. 
I hope we will see each other. <laughs> I want to get no? you on my camera in Mumbai. Okay. And after that, I will attend a couple Drupal meetups. The uh, next stop will be in Singapore, the lovely Singapore. After that, I will be in Vietnam, Hanoi, because I will be a featured speaker in the first Drupal Camp Vietnam. Uh, I am trying to exchange experience with them uh, because they are doing their first Drupal Camp. Uh, that will be an awesome experience. And also, I will participate in two meetups in Japan, one in Tokyo and one in Osaka. Uh, after that, I will go to China, Shanghai. Uh, uh, this is the, the yearly Drupal Khan in Shanghai. Shanghai. <laughs> um, from there, I get a sponsor to visit Beijing. Uh, so he is paying me the, the flight from Shanghai to Beijing. Uh, to participate in uh, Drupal meetups and talking with a couple universities there. And after that, I will go to Chongqing. So this is not a, very, it's not a popular city, but this is a growing community, and this is part of my objective. I, I don't want to visit popular tourist destinations. I want to visit places where people want to learn about Drupal 8 and Drupal Council. So I will visit in Chongqing, and after that, I will go to Chengdu, because it's close to Chongqing. Next stop will be uh, Bangkok in Thailand. And after that will be uh, Cambodia in Phnom Penh. Uh, it's a long trip, right? So I always, almost finished. <laughs> after that, I will go to Hong Kong. And again, Drupal Meetup. After that, I will go to Philippines in Manila to participate in their Drupal camp. And I will finish my trip if I, if I got the visas in Australia or New Zealand. So this is a... Uh, and then I will go to return to the America using Los Angeles or Hawaii or something like that and return in Costa Rica. So that will be three 18 uh, cities and 13 countries. Wow. So I wanted to say wow about 15 or 20 times now, but I controlled myself not to interrupt you. That's, that's just, that's amazing. Um, and, and what is it that, so you're going to meetups, you're going to companies, you're talking with these local communities. What is it that you're promoting? What is, it, what is, your, what is your mission with these communities in the developing world? Yeah, the, my mission is to say to say then, uh, okay, you can do more for yourself. You need to try to believe in yourself. You need to, you need to start to write documentation in your language, in, in any language. You can expect to solve your problems, right? And... Um, and obviously, the idea is Drupal A is coming up, so is the learning curve. Everybody is still worried about that. So I want to try to show them it's not that it's difficult, but it's not impossible. And try to to put a seed in there to, to in in the in many things like they need to be more participated. They need to participate more in Drupal cons or near Drupal camps to try to create a a uh, better Asian community around Drupal. Does your experience from Drupal in Central America and South America? Uh... Exactly. Yeah, that is the idea. So because in, in, in South America, what we do is we are, we are really linked. So I travel uh, during the year visiting several cities in Latin America to try to exchange experience, to try to present in about technical stuff, stuff and everything. And now we are like a big family. And I think that is, is also, yeah, obviously the challenges they have different because they're more population and they have several languages, uh, but I think it is possible. So my idea is will be really, I will be really happy if we start to see more contributions from China uh, and maybe pushing the Drupal Association to try to, ha to have some multilingual information in the homepage. Because yeah. the main complaint they say, for instance, I talk with people from Korea and Japan and China, is like uh, when they try to sell or find something, Drupal.org is, is not the best source of information for them. Yeah. Um, this is something they really want. So what are the top three things that the established Drupal community around the world can do to help 
growing Drupal communities in, in, in places like this? Okay, I think they need to believe in themselves first. So they need to organize meetups, try to give the opportunity to anyone to present something because I believe anyone have a good story to tell. So they just need, and, and, they, and that will be encourage people to publish. So if we open an opportunity to publish content, there will be increased more documentation in the language. So recently, for instance, in Latin America, we have started an idea to, because there is now a planet for blogs in English, and now they accepted we will have a planet for Spanish and Portuguese. Nice. And this, this kind of stuff promote and encourage people to participate more. Great. That is a, that's a really good idea. Yeah. So you were telling me as we were getting this set up about the Drupal community in China, uh, in, in certainly in Europe. And I guess in a lot of the so-called Western world, China is, a is, a, is kind of mysterious. It's a huge place. It's got huge, interesting problems. It's got an awful lot of people and the language is very different. So I don't feel that I know very much about China at all. You've been talking with members of the Drupal community in China. What's going on there in, in open source in Drupal? Well, they, they are doing, they are working as an island. So they have, for instance, they have a Drupal, Drupal China.cn website and they publish a lot of information that you can imagine. This is a lot, of, but nobody knows about that. They don't use the GDOs because they don't feel this is a good, a good way to, to communicate in their community. So I, I think the challenge is for Drupal, or a Drupal organization around the world is to try to find the proper channels to communicate with them. So what I did, I do some research, I, I discovered they use QQ, which is a clone of ICQ. And then I create my account and was in Chinese, was, was a nightmare at the beginning. <laughs> but now, finally, I found the groups and they are totally open. They, if you follow this group, this is like about oh, 4,000 people talking about Drupal problems, issues, documents, and they really love when, when some people uh, overseas try to share something with them. Wow. Wow. So, we, I, we, I think as Larry Krell say in his technical documentation, he said Drupal 7 was an island. In real life, we have islands in communities mm -hmm. because we don't know what boats we need to take to get to that island. So, so are, you, are you doing this trip to build some bridges between those islands to start to connect us better? Exactly. That is the point. Uh -huh. It's one of the, one of the, one of the ideas. And okay. to learn about them, as I say, we need to learn what is doing for that because maybe IRC, as you say at the beginning of in, in this session, is popular for Drupalers, but that doesn't mean it's the unique way to, to reach people. So I think in any country or any region, we need to find uh, the options we have to communicate with them. Let's change gears for a minute. Okay. How did you discover Drupal? Uh, well, this is a funny story. Uh, I was working for an, uh, Hugh Hewlett Packard, but then another development company uh, offered me a job in Drupal. So I read a Drupal book in 48 hours. I did an interview and guess what? I get the job. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a nightmare at the beginning because I have to learn Drupal and train two persons in three months and deliver a project. Mm. So the process was, Terrible, but I believe in my soul the procedure was wrong, but the platform was okay. So from that, I decided to start a community in Costa Rica. And two years later, I create a company by myself and my business partner. Wow. What was that Drupal book? A pro development uh, for Drupal 6. Oh. Pro Drupal development. This a, is, classic, um, a classic, a <laughs> classic. So I, I get a job for that book. <laughs> I, 
I could say that. All right. So you owe you owe those folks a beer. <laughs> yeah. So I I am trying to return in in some way what I get from the community. You chose Drupal because you realized that it let you reuse your knowledge and and solve more interesting problems and and deliver something better faster, right? Correct. Why did you why did you stay with Drupal all these years? Why didn't you move to something else? I think because the kind of customers you can get in Drupal is more established. So it's not like a, we don't have a marketing person in our, or sales guy in our company. So we get all our projects mouth to mouth and the projects in Drupal are the, in a good size in terms of how many resources and how many months uh, you can execute this project. It's between three or six months. So that means that represent a good uh, you know flow of cash in your company in terms of the contents because with other products the client the kind of clients they get is require a, a lot of effort in terms of sales because every month you need to find and find and find new projects new projects new projects uh -huh. so for my business perspective is a is a way to to get a good to you know to be in the wave for more, for uh, as much time as possible. Okay, so you've been running, let me guess, you've been running that company for six years now, right? Right. Can you please give me your shameless plug for your company? Okay, what we did, uh, we grow the community, that's it. So we, we believe our company couldn't exist the Drupal community, the local community, period. So the, the Drupal community in Costa Rica have the same time that we, we live as a company. So we invest time and money to grow up the local and communities around. Fantastic, fantastic. So listen, you're doing the around the Drupal world in 120 days insanity 18 cities in 13 countries, right? Um, <clears throat> and I believe that you've got three things that you're talking about. The first thing I think we've touched on already, and that is convincing local communities to believe in themselves and to grow themselves, to produce documentation, to produce, to help each other in, in their own languages, right? Right. The second thing you're going to be talking about is Drupal 8. What is it that makes Drupal 8 an especially good fit for, for people in, well, in these countries, in, in the developing world that you're visiting? Okay, uh, because I grew up in a developing country. I, I am Colombian by born. Uh, sometimes we don't use first class software because we believe it's expensive and will be really hard to find resources to do that. So uh, for this reason, in developing countries, you see some government sites that are really bad. Uh, so I think if we can provide the tools to teach them, you can create first class, first class product for yourself, not to sell in USA for America so, uh, or Europe. So you, you can create first class product for your government, for universities. So that will be elevated quality of the cities, the, the cities in life, because for instance, in Africa, they read more mobiles and they don't have we, uh, government websites for mobile because all the solutions they have are really expensive. So uh -huh. I, I, this is my, my point of view. So giving them the tools to do a first class product will be changed in a way their society. So Drupal 8, uh, just to make it perfectly clear, is mobile first, responsive first, out of the box. Exactly. Um, is great for powering app backends if you want to go that way. It is top quality, up to the minute, exciting software. The PHP is written in a very uh, up to date way. So essentially, the Drupal community is providing the best possible enterprise, pro professional, government quality software to, solve, to, solve to anyone. Here to anyone who wants to solve a, a problem in their own in their own country. Exactly. So they don't need to look solutions out there. They just need to learn the first class product to do first class stuff 
stuff for your citizens. Super. Now, your third message, your third theme on your tour is your project that you run with Jesus Olivas and right. some other great people, and that's the Drupal console. Can you mm -hmm. tell us what the Drupal console is and what, uh, why people should be using it, what it does? Drupal console is a tool built using Symfony console in the same way that, that Drupal A use Symfony components to create Drupal A. We do the same to try to, to bring the awesomeness that Symfony console provide in the Drupal world. And the main feature is to generate Drupal A code. You can generate controllers, models, forms, and uh, all the basic stuff you need to, to be as a Drupal developer. So it saves, me, it saves me writing a lot of boilerplate code for one. Exactly, exactly. So you need to be worried about that at the beginning. So that's when you, will, you could be productive in five minutes. Mm. And, and then just be concentrate in the, in the business logic of the company. The second thing is we can create content. That is good. Um, in terms of local community, Drupal Console uh, provides a special, a special attention to local communities. What that means, we have right now 12 languages supported. It's 100% translated to Hindi. That is good for DrupalCon uh, India. And, and it's translated uh, in more than 80% to Hungarian, Romanian, Chinese, and Vietnamese. Wow. And we have some other languages like Japanese and Catalan, uh, because that way, it's like an Nelson Mandela say, if you speak to someone in the modern language, you touch your hair, hair, right? Or his hair. Mm. So we are trying to do that. So you can do two stuff fast and quickly. And if you speak Chinese, that is like a, that open your mind totally. Wow. wow. So can you compare console and Drush and, and where they overlap and why I might want one or the other or both? Uh, they are some overlap in terms of uh, interaction with Drupal. So in terms to enable models, disable models, this kind of stuff. So we have to do that because it's, it's good to have a good entire solution. Uh, so this is, uh, and when we that at the beginning is because if we generate models, we want to have a way to enable that model without a third party solution. Sure. So, uh, in, my, in my real life, I use Josh when I need in Drupal 7 projects. It's a great, it's a great solution. Uh, but we just provide as an, any open source project uh, an, a new opportunity and we put the, co the code boilerplate on top the language and the code generation. And we we want to introduce some stuff. We have in some level, some elements to learn. And we have some ways to create, a, to define processes. So th there are a, like a fine kind of a, commands you can run in, in Drupal console. So what, what kind of a process could I define with the console? We have, for instance, we have a command. We, 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 we start with the idea of chain of reaction. So it's like a, you can write a recipe to do something. So you can write a YAML file to, for instance, create a model, then create a form inside that model just to create, create a controller, create a services, create of everything. So you can put that in a YAML file, share it with your friend, and he will execute and he will get the same code you just generate. Wow, so, so it's, it's sort of like a feature generator. It's more like that because feature is for content, uh, it's for content, but with features you can create code. Okay, it but does. it's a functionality set generator. It's not just like you said, one module or one interface. You can actually chain together a whole set of functionality. Mm -hmm. Or you can create your recipes to do sysadmin stuff. Maybe clear cache, enable model, disable models, deploy something. And because you can create your own commands, you can create your own recipes. So if, and, and it's different for other people because if you are a, a workshop, maybe you are working in verticals, you can create a JAML recipe for pharmacies. Then you know a pharmacy require this specific Drupal version, download some specific models, configure that models, 
and generate some custom model to, to do in a pharmacy. So that means you have your recipe. If you get a new client, just change the name, run the chain, and then you will have a new website using your magic, right? Oh, and <laughs> using recipe. So you said I can create my own com command. So this is also fully extensible. It's fully extensible. Actually, the flag model have a command for console, meta tag, a panel layout, I guess, a web profiler, for instance, which is now inside devil. They have commands to run the, the, the console uh, to do their own stuff. So we don't want to cover everything. So there are some specific logic that require to live inside models. That is so cool. That is so interesting. So Jesus and I, we invest about six hours per day in this project. <laughs> Not everything is about code because we, we have a support channel. We need to review, talk with people, talk with translator. Mm. Right. Wow. <laughs> so, and then you're running a company and you're also investing in the Costa Rican community and you're dropping, abandoning everything to go do Drupal everywhere else for 120 days. Uh, it's not that bad as you as, as you say. So it's, it's no, a lot I haven't of fun. gotten to sleeping or eating yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. I will be have a really fun uh, trip. So I, I I love to meet people, cultural stuff. So uh, well, you know more. You know that more than me. So uh, when's the next <laughs> Drupal camp in Costa Rica? Will be in in July, uh, end of July. So check check it out your agenda. Why not? Everything is possible. I'm going to Asia. Yeah, <laughs> Everything right. is possible. Hey, so Enzo, you and I are going to see each other in person in yeah. Mumbai very soon, right? Correct. Awesome. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing you in person. This is so, so, so interesting. And where can people find you online to now to follow your trip and to see what you're up to and and you know the photos of all these meetups you're going to how, how can we how can we keep track of you now yeah my personal website is nsolutions.com it's like a enso and solutions but without without the so okay <laughs> uh, so i will be posting about my experience about talking with people their their needs what they want and everything about my trip are you going to be tweeting? Yeah, tweeting on Facebook. All right. Uh, What's your Twitter handle? It's N Solutions. N Solutions. Okay. I will link to all of that in the post for this. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you so much for doing all the cool stuff that you're doing for the Drupal community all around the world. And I mean, it's just really, really exciting. So, and I, I, I am really, really looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to you for your time uh, to, to help me to try to spread the word. My, okay. my pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you so and much. So, cool, man. It's really, really good to talk with you. I'm going to...